Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, the Little Rock Nine. Um, I want to remind you that in 1954, the case Brown versus Board of Education is an overturned segregation in public schools. Uh, but by 1957, this still wasn't happening in some places, uh, just like um, how segregation was still happening in the buses and stuff like that. And, in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, in, in Arkansas, uh, the schools were not desegregated at all. So uh, what's going to happen here is you have nine African-American students that are chosen, right? they're very carefully chosen uh, to desegregate the schools. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're chosen to attend one of the most prestigious schools in the area, uh, Central High School. Um, and here's the thing, right? Like they are chosen deliberately. They are good students. They have, uh, you know, straight A's, uh, church goers, uh, good backgrounds. I mean, just really like an impeccable reputation. And just like how we were talking about Rosa Parks being, uh, perfect to build a movement around well, these nine students are perfect to desegregate these schools. It's like, well, who better than these nine, um, model students uh, to take on uh, segregation. But of course, uh, the people in Arkansas are not ready for it. Um, so even though the students that like you see in this photograph, uh, you know, they're screaming, they're hurling insults at them. Um, they are prepared. These nine students are prepared. They are trained in nonviolent uh, mm -hmm. resistance tactics. And um, they are going to use that training to, I like it's, you know, like it's keep the moral high ground, so to speak, right? Like not st stoop down to the level where they're going to be screaming at each other and all of that. So, um, opening day, uh, at the school, uh, first day of school, there is a huge mob just screaming at them, um, all kinds of obscenities. Uh, the governor of Arkansas is there. His name is Orville Faubus. And, uh, you know, he's like standing in the door, and like, you know, like, you shall not pause, that sort of thing. He even calls out the National Guard. Um, and it really becomes kind of a crazy mob scene. Now, President Eisenhower is sort of realizing that he's going to have to back up what the Supreme Court says, whether he wants to or not is going to deploy, um, I believe it's, um, how many of these guys? I don't remember how many, I think it was like a hundred of them, or I don't know how many, don't quote me on that, but he, he essentially deploys the 101st Airborne Division, uh, which again, like it's a very distinguished um, division uh, of the military. So, you know, we're not playing around here. These guys, these members of the Airborne Division are going to spend months defending these kids' right to go to school. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing is that there are some students that are very supportive of this, of the kids attending the school. And yet there are others that, you know, maybe not so much. Um, they're resentful that these kids are getting all the attention um, or they're just straight up. Uh, you know, don't like the change that they see happening in their community. So anyways, uh, all of this leads to massive resistance. You know, uh, again, it's a huge overreaction um, from the, uh, the white communities. Uh, but then also, even from the governor himself, I mean, essentially, to fight desegregation, he's going to order that all the schools shut down. Um, and they're not going to reopen. Um, in the case of a Central High, they don't reopen for a year. And in some places in Virginia, I mean, there is a county that closes for five years. So there's no school at all. Um, and so anyways, um, it's just uh, another example of, of these changes that are happening, that people are responding to them um, in very violent uh, aggressive ways, uh, but what do these uh, young men and women do? They 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 just go about their day and they do not uh, engage uh, these protesters. They do not um, 
they do not throw insults at them or anything like that. So um, anyways, let me see if I can play this uh, video for you. If not, we're going to have to end it here. Oh, good. It's working. What about you, sir? Do you think they understand? Watch this. If I got anything to do with it, they won't show up. Well, I think it's a breaking point of the school integration. I just don't uh, feel that they have a right to go to school. Mm. It is easy to believe today that we are an enlightened society, free from problems of race, gender, or economic separation. But some of the most difficult lessons we learn are a result of individuals who push us through these divisive barriers. In September of 1957, nine black school children, the eldest only 17, forced us through such a blockade. They sought a better education for themselves and the opportunity to pursue the American dream. This is Central High School, Little Rock, Arkansas. Troops, which for nearly three weeks will end the sidewalk here in front of the high school under orders to keep the colored students out, have been replaced now from their orders to comply with the law, which means let the Negro students in if they come in. We were Terrence Roberts, Jefferson Thomas, Thelma Mothershed, Elizabeth Eckford, Ernest Green, Carlotta Walls, Melba Patillo, Minnie Jean Brown, and Gloria Ray. They became known as the Little Rock Nine. The 1954 Supreme Court ruling on Brown versus the Board of Education found segregation of schools unconstitutional. But as the Little Rock Nine approached the high school, segregationists swarmed the campus. I got no business out here. <laughs> this is our school, not theirs. They are their own. As the violence escalated, one schoolgirl, Elizabeth Eckford, was threatened by an angry mob chanting, lynch her, lynch her. President Dwight Eisenhower intervened in Little Rock and set a precedent for our nation as a whole. Such an extreme situation has been created in Little Rock. This challenge must be met. And with such measures as will preserve to the people as a whole their lawfully protected rights in a climate permitting their free and fair exercise. In the present case, the troops are there pursuant to law solely for the purpose of preventing interference with the orders of the court. On September 25, 1957, the 101st Airborne Division and 10,000 National Guard troops escorted the Little Rock Nine as they walked bravely past screaming mobs and made their way to the classrooms of Little Rock Central High School. Just got a report here on this end that the students are in. Do you feel it's worth it going through this? Yes, I do. These nine heroes were willing to step forward and in doing so alter the course of history. Marquette University is honored to bestow a Okay, so <laughs> as you see there, there was people that did not take that news well, right? They were upset. They were visibly upset. And um, they don't like um, that their schools are being desegregated. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things that we have to take into consideration here is uh, the lengths to which... Some of these folks are willing to go to um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, to keep things as they are. They're they're not uh, willing to change. They don't want to change. Um, but there are others that understand that. For example, you know, Eisenhower sending the 101st Airborne Division. That was not something that was done, you know, uh, as, a, as him taking a stand on civil rights. It was the recognition that, you know, because it's very clear there, it, it was to make sure that nobody is intervening with the Supreme Court decisions to desegregate the schools. So it's, you know, you have to kind of see it for what it is. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, it's, it's, it's very important that you understand that the way that these kids are able to go in there and um, desegregate the schools, how much courage that took, how much um, 
training they needed, you know, to be able to put up uh, with that kind of environment. I mean, I don't know what I would have done if that crazy lady right there would have been screaming all kinds of obscenities at lynch her, lynch her. I mean, it's just really appalling. Um, I think for today, we're going to end it there. I will be recording the rest of the 1960s uh, civil rights movements. Be on the lookout for that. And um, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.